aware that we're calling. They're waiting for us to call. And then you get them up. They are the rock star on that call. Not Marlon, not me, not anybody else, right? People always do it backwards. Um, so, but that is an event. And so you should have specific objectives. Hey Marlon, a little bit about this person. They come from a broken home, they have a really hard time keeping a job, they're, they're scared to death of commitment, whatever. So that Marlon understands what it is that he's gonna talk to this person about. When Marlon and I were doing three week calls, I always knew the person that was gonna be on the other end of the phone because he would always prep me. And that made me effective when I could get on there and I knew, okay, on this call, the basic premises of three-way call is I'm going to thank the person who invited me. I have goosebumps. I love it. I thank the person who invited me. So if I'm doing a three-way call tomorrow, I'm doing it with Dell. It doesn't matter. Dell, thanks for bringing me on the call. I appreciate it. It's nice of you to think of me in order to be able to help support you. And hello, Joanne. Or hello, Joanna. This is ni it's nice to meet you. Dell has told me all about you. I look forward to getting to know you. I. I hear that you are interested in starting a business, whatever that you've prepped, right? So there is a, a thank you, and then there's a congratulations for taking time to be on the call, and then you speak very shortly to the points that you were teed up to. And then there's a wrap up with a, here's your next steps. This is what I would like you to do, Joanna. What I need you to do is I need you to contact Dell after we got the phone. He'll answer any further follow-up questions and then he'll help you get started. We look forward to working with you. So there's a, there's a bow on it at the end. So that is an event. I'm just glad you brought that up because most people don't realize that those are events. So what other types of events are there? Um, three-way calls, Marlon and I have done three-way calls that last three minutes. We've done three-way calls that last 15. It really depends on the person and their engagement level because sometimes they don't want you off. Like they just want to keep asking you questions, which is great. So I don't mind investing that time if they're if they're advancing questions. Okay, so I did a three-way call the other day for the, with a, one of my guys in New Jersey, and the guy on the phone was like, "Okay, so so when I decide to to do this, what support is there going to be?" I mean, that's a great question. Well, let's talk about that. What support do you need there to be? Well, I'd really like to be able to reach out to you, for example. And I said, "Okay, well, you could, but the way this works is is you would ultimately reach out to." And I, the guy who put me on the phone, I said, you, you reach out to him first, and if he's unavailable, then I'm more than happy as a fallback, right? So I was trying to train him in the process at the same time, but he was asking really good buying questions, meaning, okay, when I engage, is there support? And if there is support, how can I access? He was really just finding, hey, I want your cell number, I want to be able to call you, I don't want to call this guy. But we're all just one person, right? You can't handle all the calls for your team, nor should you. So that's a good topic. Which we'll come back to. It's called get out of the way. Um, <clears throat> so three-way calls, a good three-way call to me is between five and ten minutes. What other types of events are there? I'm sorry, I just okay. wanted to find out what was your video. Uh, where can I find the video? On my YouTube, just go to YouTube and type in No Collar Pro. Uh, I'll be in somewhere in the top five. It's funny because I have guys on my team that are better branded with no color pro than I am. <laughs> Those dang kids, they know how to do that stuff so well. Uh, I don't even come up at the top search for no color. And I created it. It's just funny how good they are. But anyway. Um, okay, let's back to events. What other types of events are there? Opportunity good. events. Opportunity, like, like a business overview, right? Thursday. So, we, like we have Thursday, that is a grand event. Does that take some? Does that take some skill to pull off? Yeah. Right. It took a lot of planning. There was a lot. How many people were involved behind the scenes to make that event happen? Over half a dozen. Well, at least a half a dozen, because you had at least a half a dozen running around just doing AV. Then you had Darren. You had me. I oh, mean. Yeah. You had you, you had Char, you had the whoever called to book the venue, you had whoever paid for the venue, you had um, people hauling in equipment, you had chairs being set up. I mean, there was a, at least a dozen people that were involved in pulling that event off. So don't think, oh hey, we got an event coming up, oh Marlon will take care of it. Every single one of you, the first question you should ask is, how can I support the event? That's your first question. So if it, if it's a if Char's going to do an event, 
Okay, Char. Number one, how can I support you? What types of activities can I do to support the team as a whole, right? From sitting at the table, right? That, there's a perfect example of supporting this event. They're, they're jumping in, they're writing name tags, they're taking information, selling t-shirts, whatever, right? They're doing their part. Um, Matt was down here setting up chairs. Before you even got here, the room was set up because he's like, look, I'm gonna step in and I'm gonna help support. So you should ask yourself, as a leader, how can I support? What can I do, um, not only logistically to help support, but can I help support financially? And I know not everybody's in a position, but you should at least be aware that stuff costs money and shouldn't just assume that somebody else because they're willing to do it, because you're gonna benefit just like they are. See if you can't pitch in in some way. And even if that's, hey, Here's 10 bucks. I know you're, it's a free event, but here's 10 bucks to go toward the cost of helping set this up. Because many hands make light work. And just like many $5 donations make the burden easy, it also allows you to do more events because it's not always overburdening one individual. Um, then, how can I support the event in terms of getting bodies in the room? Because that's another way to support an event is bringing people. That's why I love that you recognized who had the biggest, who had the most people they brought to this event. You had two different people that were at 10 or, or more, and that's great. That's awesome that they are, hey look, let's get out there and let's put bodies in the room because you should never miss an event, and this is why. Because sometimes you need to go to that event to get energized, right? You go to that event because you need the event, and sometimes the event just needs you there. Sometimes it, the event needs you and your energy and your wisdom because without them showing up, name tags don't get done. So the event needs them. But at the same time, they might pull out a nugget out of something that I might say that helps them grow their business in the future. So they need the event, the event needs them. It works every way, okay? Because events are really tough to have when nobody's in the room. Make sense? Yes. All right, so any other types of events? One-on-ones. One-on-ones, a great event. There's one-to-one, -one, there's one-to-few, and one-to-many. So those are all events. A one-to-one -one is you and I sitting knee-to-knee, face-to-face, and we're chatting it up. I did an event, a one-on-one -on -one event, at a Starbucks the other day. The guy was selling me life insurance, health insurance. 1,200 bucks a month, self-employed, right? Need insurance, and I said, now that you've gotten my business, I need you to realize that I am self-employed and I want to write off this meeting. I need to write this meeting off. He goes, okay. I said, that means I need to present something to you and I want you to give me 10 minutes so that you can hear what it is that I do for a living so that we can make sure that this event, if nothing else, it's a write off for me. And he goes, deal. So for 10 minutes, it's really like three minutes, I shared with him what it is that I do, and he joined the next day, he didn't join on the spot, tough to sign somebody up with a three minute exposure in a Starbucks, right? But I sent him some information, and I specifically told him how I wanted him to approach that information, and then the next day he joined. So, but I allow, allowed me to write that off. That was a one-on-one -on -one event, and I made it a business event by saying, hey, you would not respect me if I didn't present to you what it is that I did. One to many, you bring over a couple of friends, I come up, we sit down, you're all three on the same couch, but we're shooting the bull and I'm presenting. That's an event. The point that you need to understand with events, and there's also training events, this is an event. The important thing to understand is that every event has an objective. You are always going into an event understanding what you want to get out of the event. Sometimes that's a, a new recruit. Sometimes that's uh, a transfer of knowledge. Sometimes that's motivation, energy for yourself. Um, sometimes it's just strengthening relationships. Sometimes it's just to make a sale, right? You want to sell a case of Awaken, whatever. Right? You have different objectives. Just make sure that every event has an objective it takes many hands to pull it off. That's the best thing I can teach you about events. 
also on bigger events, just remember that there is a transfer of content, but there's also a recognition piece in any in any event. So you have to understand that I am just a part of this. I was invited to come. So when when Marlon was the MC the other night, and he went through a process of saying, hey, I couldn't have done it without Char. I couldn't have done it without Frank. I mean, that was such a great leader to give that part, give that back, give that away. Awesome. Let's talk, let's talk about know your audience. So first of all, <laughs> Any questions on on events? Do we need to cover anything else? Or are we good? Good. Can we get you back here next month? Would you be good enough? Yeah, sell some more shirts. That's all it takes, right? Because a lot of people buying twenty dollars shirts is a lot better than me paying a thousand bucks for a ticket, right? Because yeah. I've got the Jersey group saying the same thing. When can we get you out of here? Great. So the next round of shirts, collect the series because I'm coming out with another one. Okay. Just, it's just going to be the blue collar, white collar, no collar. Uh, and on the back, it's just going to say, what collar? Question uh, mark. Um, well, hold on, Rob. You might explain what that concept, a lot of people are not on the team no collar. What is a no collar concept? So, so I grew up in a blue collar family. My family worked really hard and worked with their physical bodies, right? My, my dad, before he passed away, was a plumbing salesman, plumbing <coughs> parts. So, sold large pipes and fittings to large tall buildings. Like the, all the plumbing fixtures in this tall building, he would have been the guy that came in and sold those, right? So that was my dad. Um, unfortunately, he was taken from us when I was only one by a drunk driver. So, yeah. shout out, don't drink and drive. So, as the youngest of six kids, I grew up without a dad um, because of the ignorance of one guy. Um, but I grew up in a blue-collar family. My, nobody had ever gone to college in my family. I was the first one to get a degree in my family um, as the youngest of six kids. So growing up as a, in a blue-collar family, I started to think, you know, I really don't want that for myself. So that's why I went to college. I didn't want to work like that. So I went and got a degree, sales and marketing undergraduate, and a master's degree from Johns Hopkins, and I got an MBA. And so I was educated on how to run a business, right? But what I realized in that is running a job, getting a job, I'm just building somebody else's dream. And so I really wasn't excited about working at a spreadsheet and running numbers all day. And so I didn't love a white collar job either. There's just nothing better than what we do for a living. I mean, my job was I got to come to Hawaii and then I got <laughs> to do a couple of meetings and then I got to go play. And yet, everything gets to be a write-off because the whole premise that I'm here is work-related. So that means, it means a lot of things, but if you didn't see my pictures, we went skydiving yesterday. It was off <laughs> the chain. Oh my goodness, it was so fun. I'm still, I, my heart was beating like two hours later, I was still out <laughs> So, So blue-collar workers often have time but no money because they only work 40 hours a week, right? Yeah. Or, or the general public that, that is a blue collar worker only works for it. White collar workers often have money but no time. They make a lot of money, but they work 80 hours a week in order to get it. So I wanted to, I wanted to create a team of no collar professionals, which means we have not only time, but financial freedom at the same time that we're gonna be able to enjoy and experience life without subscribing to any of those other so it is not a dress code. I still like collars. Um, yeah. <laughs> Rick's like, hey, I came without a collar. <laughs> Good for you. So, um, so that's really the whole premise behind the team. We want to create a no-collar lifestyle. And jumping out of planes is a no-collar lifestyle. We went and hiked yesterday with Cecilia and Marlon. We went up to the Makapu White House. Lighthouse. We can call it a lighthouse. It was more like a a light bump. <laughs> tiny little light bump. It was like a night light when it comes to, when it comes to the world of lighthouses. That was a night light. Um, anyway, but it was great. It was just being there, and it was 
looking at the ocean and smelling the air and seeing the sea turtle and you know helping the Japanese tourist lady get up and down the rock so she could get a really cool picture as opposed to just one stand on the train. Right? It was that kind of stuff. So that's the premise behind the no-color lifestyle. Um, so let's talk about markets. So this will come to knowing this will come to knowing your audience as well. So you have four different markets that you present to or that you would market to. Number one is your hot market. So when you're talking, Dreamcatcher, Dreamcatcher, uh, when you're talking about having a difficult time approaching people that are really close to you, right? That's your hot market. Those are people that you grew up with. Oftentimes they are your closest friends and family. That's your hot market. Now traditionally, everybody has three people. This is just random stats, right? Traditionally, everybody has three people that they will that they would call if they were in immediate danger. Right? There's three people that you could reach out to. Most people have three people. Hey, I need something, and they would be right there. Okay, that's your those are your hot market people. Um, traditionally, when you if you were to start a business like Wake Up Now, you would call those hot market people because they're people with which you already have a with whom you already have a relationship. So you're like, hey. I, I'm, I'm launching a business, this is what I'm doing, I want you involved, get over to my house. And that's how you would approach them, because you have that comfort level with them. I don't need it, don't give me any excuses, no, stop, shut up, get over here, right? Their, your, their comfort level is that, to that degree where you literally can speak to them like that. Um, those are your hot market category. Now your approach to those people is often just one of your initial reaction is, look, you just got to trust me. You're going to get in. We're going to do it together. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be awesome. And we're going to have fun. And, it's, and we're going to make a bunch of money. And whatever else your approach is, right? But that is such a small group of people percentage-wise. It's a very tiny group. Um, when I got involved in Wake Up Now, I had eight people that I called very similar to that. I had eight people join on day one. Um, and only two of them are still with me. So doesn't mean that just because they're willing to jump with you because of the respect level, doesn't mean that it's right for them and they're gonna stick around, which I have learned. So out of those eight, only two are even involved or engaged. Um, so remember, just because someone's willing to say yes doesn't mean that they're the best person for you to be working with. And nobody's <laughs> immune to it. I've been victim of wanting to sign somebody up just because it was a checkbox, right? It was one more person, it was one more leg, it was one more line, it was someone else to potentially build with. So I've evolved in my own thought process over time as well. So your hot market, you will approach them in a very specific way. It's usually very casual, it's very, sometimes it's pretty forceful. Um, you don't really take a bunch of guff from that kind of, that group, it's just, look, I don't wanna hear it, get in, we're gonna do it. Um, your warm market are people that are removed from that group. They're people you see on a very consistent basis. You have a good relationship with them. You can talk to them uh, relatively open, um, but certainly not at the casual level that you can talk to somebody in your hot market. So people in your warm market, to me, are people that you go to church with, so you see them once a week, but you don't really communicate outside of church. Um, or some other organization type that you go and you spend a significant amount of time, but it's usually just weekly or even monthly, but it's consistent. So your consistency is there that you see this individual, but you don't really communicate outside of that environment. That's a warm market person. So your approach to someone like that is, hey, John, man, I haven't seen you. No, you've seen the song last week because the consistency is there. But Hey John, you know, hey, since last time we spoke, we have never done anything outside of this. You know, I see you here at the at the at the soccer league every every week. We kick the ball around, but you know, we really haven't spent any time getting to know each other. I'd like to get to know you better. Do you mind if we go grab a coffee sometime? Right. So that's a warm market person. That uh, would be a different approach um, because you're not going to jump out and say, hey, we're going to do this together. Because then they're like, please, I'm not freak is away. Um, <laughs> So, so knowing your audience, your I always bucket people into categories so I would know really how I would approach that person in terms of introducing. 
pool market is still consistent, but far fewer touch points during a given year. So to me, a cool market is the your kid's bus driver that you give cookies to you know, on Easter, right? They, but they're always there. They're in your life, but it's not someone with whom you have a really big relationship. They're your receptionist at your dentist office. So you see them every six months. You're certainly friendly when you walk in. They know your name because they've you know, you've been going there for five years, but yet you don't really have any kind of a connection with that person outside of, I see you once every six months. So that's your cool market. Oftentimes, um, the best, and this can be warm and or cool, is people that participate in sporting events, like my kids, they're in every sport you can imagine, right? Right now they're playing lacrosse. So I have my lacrosse parents, so I see these people at games, but I don't always have, I don't, some of them I've never even had a conversation with, but I see them all the time. To me, that's a cool market. A warm market would be, I see them at the games and we have a conversation periodically. So that type of group can fall into either category. But at least you understand that, okay, as I'm approaching this person, cool market, I'll make the point when I talk about the last one. The last group is cold market, which is everybody else in the world. That's just anybody that's not you have no particular relationship with. Um, online or offline, this is what I've learned over the time is that online relationships and offline relationships are irrelevant. You can have just as strong of a relationship with someone you met online as you can offline. And they will still bucket into different categories. People that like your photos all the time or are a friend on Facebook is a much more warm market than someone who's a friend of a friend who you occasionally see a post and you guys will occasionally say, you know, hey, that was cool, or you'll occasionally like each other's photos. Cool versus warm, same kind of deal, doesn't matter. It's just like that parent at the soccer game or the lacrosse game that you either talk to or you don't talk to, even though you see them all the time. So cold market is just every other random person on the planet you have no relationship with. Clearly that's a totally different approach. Here's the underlying thing that's relevant to all of these different markets is rapport. Rapport is paramount. Don't ever talk to somebody about any kind of business, launching a business, any kind of saving money, not saving money. Uh, just don't go into the conversation until you have established a rapport. Can you say that one more time? I'm just I can hear that. Rapport. Rapport is paramount. And it doesn't matter, online or <laughs> That's so nice, the view over here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> At least she's cleaning it up. So, um, rapport is paramount. Online or offline relationships, it's irrelevant. It doesn't matter what category they fall in, if they're warm, hot, warm, cold, or cool. Or hot, warm, cool, or cold. You still need to establish the rapport before you have the conversation. And when I say the conversation, is that will vary based on who the audience is. So I was telling everybody, I was telling these lovely ladies because they got here first, kudos to them. Um, I got, I, I, I brought a gal, I introduced a gal to financial freedom today, this morning, um, by virtue of um, my skydiving pictures. So she had made a comment and I replied back to the comment and it was a general open comment on the feed and uh, I replied back and somebody else sent me a message, a, a, an instant message said, hey, I've been working with this gal all morning, but as soon as you reached out to her, she stopped communicating. She said, oh, I never mind, I'm gonna talk directly to Rob. And, and I said to the guy, I said, so what are you saying to me? Like, are you upset with me because she wants to work with me as opposed to working with you? Because it was just an open comment on an open feed. And I reply to open comments and open feeds just like anybody else. So if someone comments on a picture that's posted that says, hey, this is interesting, or hey, I'd like to know about this, or hey, what, what do you guys have going on, or hey, I've seen Wake Up Now, I'm all over those. I'll be, I'll be all over those just like anybody else. Well, this guy said, hey, I've been working with her, but then as soon as you got in the picture, she kind of cut me off and went with you. And, and I said, my reply back to him was, is, first of all, I don't know this person, and I had no idea you were having a conversation with her, because she just made an open post, and it had only been 
hour. So when he said I'd been working with her all morning, that was kind of an overstatement, right? Um, look at this good looking crew. Golf. How did you golf? Uh, I went to the beach. No, you did. I spent all the time in the sand traps. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so so my point with this is, is so when I replied back uh, to him, he and I, and by the way, he was just pulling my, he was, he didn't. He wasn't upset about it, but it was my feed. Therefore, if she chose to work with me, I'm not going to apologize because it was my post, right? If it was his post and I came in and swooped in and she decided, then I would have then I, I would have backed off. But the compromise was when I sign her up, I'll just put her in your business. And he goes, deal, right? So there was. There was the there was the compromise. So just remember that online, offline, relationships are important. You guys are always working with people. You always have you always have things you have to be aware of. And the more you rise in, in visibility, not popularity, but visibility amongst other people and other team, the more scrutiny you get for your decisions. So be aware as your star rises. Know that more people are watching you, and the decisions you make have a greater ripple effect. So I am extremely conscious of making sure that that the decisions that I make, I would make in front of a jury or under a light. If that makes sense, right? because you, you've got to be aware. Of it. Um, Does that answer your question about the... So how do you still establish rapport, though? We have... Have we met? No, Marcus. Marcus. Yes. Rob McFadden. Pleasure. What's your last name, Marcus? Serrano. I went to school with a Serrano. Did you go to school here? No. Where? In Canada. Dude, Canada, what part? Vancouver. Vancouver is one of the coolest cities on the planet. <laughs> you know uh, Stanley Park? Yes. So that seven-mile loop? I about had a heart attack trying to run around that without stopping. Have you ever ran around that without stopping? Yes. Well, you're a better man than me. <laughs> so keep in mind, building rapport is people just want to feel your heart. They want to feel that you're real. If you ever make someone feel like a mark, that you're only interested in them if they're willing to listen to you about your business opportunity, you just killed your rapport. Because people don't give a rip about your business opportunity. How you doing? Good to see you. It's mom, right? Yeah. I love mom. I love the mom game. Um, so when you ask how I build rapport, rapport is about establishing connection. And I can establish connection with any soul on the planet. It doesn't matter where it, it I'm fairly well traveled, so I go to where you're from because odds are I have had some interaction with that city. So I build rapport based on geographic questions. Um, religious questions are also another one because I am religious. It doesn't matter if we share the same religion, but I can talk about religion comfortably and openly. So sometimes I will go to religious rapport. Sometimes I go to geographic rapport. Where are you from? Where'd you go to school? Other is business rapport. So what type of industry are you in? Oh, you sell solar? Great, I like the sun. I spend time in it every day. Right? That doesn't, that doesn't, it makes doesn't make any difference what, what the con. But rapport is nothing more than just establishing a personal connection with an individual. And you can do it by category, you can do it by age, you can do it by gender, you can do it by interests, you can do it by experience, you can do it by education. Um, family is another huge one. If you ever want to establish rapport with somebody, get them talking about their kids. Our kids are our most favorite thing, and we think they're the greatest things on the planet, even if they're lame. They're ours, right? right. So we want to talk about them. <laughs> so did that answer your question about building rapport? Yes. It's, it is, and I will spend 40 minutes establishing rapport to have a three minute conversation about the business. It is the, it is the Abraham Lincoln comment where he will spend an hour sharpening his ax, to chop down the two minutes to chop down the cherry tree or whatever that comment is. But the point is, is invest the time. To me, rapport and establishing rapport is sharpening the ax. And you will, be, you will be exponentially more successful in taking down the tree 
once you've spent the time sharpening the axe. You will never convince anybody to join you in business. Just doesn't do it. Because if they ultimately say yes, they're gone two days later because there's no foundation. So you just spend all this time trying to convince somebody to participate in, in the business when they had zero foundation in why they're doing it. So invest the time in building the rapport because they want to be interested that you give a rip about them. Once you have that rapport, then lay the foundation if it's even right for them. Matt had a great comment the other day. We did a hangout. If you don't, if you haven't participated in our hangouts, you're missing out. They are recorded, so you can go back and watch them. But Matt hosted one with me the other day, and he was telling a story about he had, he had this guy had come on board. But the way he got his interest, because they already worked together, so the rapport was already there. So he was having a conversation with somebody. Actually, why am I telling it? You you walk up here. Oh, you want me to walk yeah, up there? Yeah, you, you get. <laughs> I'm trying you to get, hide from the camera. That's all right. You get five minutes. I just need your yellow shirt on camera. We have to get it on record that you wore a yellow shirt. Yeah, and his white and his white fedora. It covers the age. Some people tell people to wake up now. I just show it. Yeah, you just you're like, bam, wake up. You look at me. You're gonna wake up. You can't be in proximity with me without waking up. So share the share the the story where your buddy was walking by. Yeah, the one from the hangout where I had to stop trying to get after your one comment. You know what it is. Yeah. Uh, no, I got a, had a guy I was talking to another buddy that was, he's getting ready to sign up. So we were just talking about wake up now, this and that, talking about, he just had some questions. And I was like, okay, well, you're going to sign up, you know, when you get home. This was a guy that's selling his, signed up, you know, he's the one that we had to go through the process Wednesday night, signed up. He was selling his iPad so he could sign up, his funds were tied. So was like, cool, so we're going to sign up by this this day. This other guy comes by and goes, well, sign up for what? Because he was like, you're selling your iPad, what for? And he tried to, kind of tried to get in on our conversation. And I kind of gave him like, you're creeping in on this thing. Like, so he's, I'm sitting in a chair, leaning back, talking, and he's like, sign up for what? I said, no, don't worry about it, dude, you're not about that. He's like, this is in Atlanta, so you know. <laughs> <laughs> our vibe's a little different than Hawaii. Translate that to Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that, oh, it's worry, like, worry, it's like being in Hawaii, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. yeah, so he just said, I said, I said no, you're not, a, you're not about this line. And he tried to, he goes, what? I said, I said no, man. I said, no, it's, I said, it takes a little commitment. It takes a, it's for sure going to take a bit of change, you know, and so it's a better life, but some people don't want to put in the work. So I said, you're not about that. Can you say that again, please? I'd like to do that. It's going to be a, it's recorded now. Okay. <laughs> I said, I don't have a replay button. I don't have a replay, man. I'm, I don't, I don't write scripts. And, <laughs> no, but it's just for real. It's like, it's some people you got to put in the work. You got to, you got to be willing for change. We all want change. You got to be willing to do it, and not everybody's willing to do it. So I told him you're not about that. And now you put it, you took it away. He heard this because he knows we're cool. I'll sit and chat with him all the time. I make him laugh. We're buddies. You know, I, I'm outgoing. I grew up in a salon. I'll talk to anybody. A lot like Rob. When Rob said I can talk to anybody, in my head I take it as a challenge. Like, all right, let's go. But it's. So we're cool, but, and now he's like, wait, now you're not gonna tell me? We talk about anything. So I took it away, in his head, he goes, he's walking, he goes, well, man, hold up, man, I'm on the lunch, but come here. And he sits down, I said, no, dude, I mean, are you for real gonna listen to me right now? He's like, I got a minute. So all I told him, I said, listen, because I got two things to tell you. I said, first, I hate MLMs. And mind you, we're, we are not hiding it, we're a network marketing company, but I said, I hate MLMs. And I told him, told them why I hate MLMs. If there's an aroma theme, I'm out. You know, guarantee you, I'm out. It's, you're not building value in anything, that's how you're surviving aroma, I'm out. And I give a few other examples of why I'm out. I was, I lived in Utah where most of them start. I watched my parents put money into company after company and never get anything out. Like, I've just seen it. I value my relationships. I told myself, and I value my friendships. I'm not gonna throw those out the window. So, I hate MLMs. That being said, comment number two is what I'm about to talk to you about as an MLM. So now his face goes, what? what did I just, I said, no, for real, what I'm about to talk to you about is an MLM, network marketing company, and I am 110% on board. That being said, what I shared with you before, given what I just told you now, if it makes you curious enough, curious enough, listen to me for a few minutes and I'll tell you why I'm on board. And he wanted to leave, he did, and his emotions, he literally was flustered, he's like, but you know I gotta listen. That's what he's like, you know I gotta listen now. I said, well cool, are you going to listen? Because I didn't want to waste my time. 
I was actually done with work, trying to get out, but he's like, cool, all right. So I was like, cool, let me tell you a little bit about it. We talked about products, we talked about uh, finance, because he's, he's newly wed, so I talked about finance management, how to hit some goals with it, talked about tax spot, showed him we we're actually, a guy next to me, Lucci was, uh, his people were at the meeting TJ was at, and so Lucci was on, I said, here, flip your computer. He showed him, I said, look up some Jordans. Boom, boom, showed him he could buy Jordans. Big deal in Atlanta. It's like, you buy the Jordans right here, and then I'll show you how to share them with your friends, even if it's out of your budget, share it with people that aren't on Wake Up Now, can buy it up through your Facebook link, and that can be shared globally. He started getting so excited at the finish of showing him um, Tax Bot with a little bit of, with a couple of quotes from Sandy Botkin on how he can really benefit and come out on top through that. He, I mean, he went, he was sitting down, he goes, he get up, throws his hands up, he's like, yo, I'm in. He said, I'm all about this. And I said, bro, hold on one second, dude. I haven't even told you about the business. He's like, that is a business. I said, no, man, that's just how you get operate day to day and benefit from being around the company. He said, hold up, what? I said, you can actually, you like this stuff. I said, we'll let you try it out. You like it, you can join it and become a business owner. You can distribute this product and get paid for it. And so he, you know, he, that's when he just got excited. He really was like, hold on, tell me more about this. And I said, well, we'll break it down. I said, the numbers can grow, you know, far a lot more than you imagine, but we'll keep it simple. It's within a month, two months time. We can get it to where, real simply put, a few people get involved, if they believe and share the products, it says you can be at $600 a month. I mean, I haven't even told them. We all know the numbers are much bigger. I didn't talk to them about those big numbers. I told them, I threw out there quickly, that yes, those are possible. I said, the numbers are bigger than what you imagine, but realistically, in a month, two months, we can get you at $600 a month on top of what you were saving. He was already sold before we said anything about the business. He jumped up and was like, yo, I'm about this. I got to talk to my wife and we're about this. So when I get back, we we're disappointed. We wanted him signed up by Wednesday night. Didn't get him done, but he will. He's like, yo, I need you to sit down with me with my wife. But he is so stoked and I'm, I'm excited about him. I already know where I'm going to put him under this other guy because he's, he just, it's about the product. And Rob's gonna, Rob will touch on that, why I feel on it. Like, I just think he's gonna stick around. If it's about the money, if they don't see the money fast enough, they're out. So you gotta, you gotta make them want it. You can't just throw it out there and beg everybody to come. I don't want people that don't want to be around me. I don't want people that don't want to share in the passion and friendships that I have. So, in short, you, know, you throw it out there, you gotta make sure they're interested. Because I didn't have time. I wasn't gonna take that time, because I had to call and apologize to somebody for being late for dinner. So I really wanted to make sure, are you going to listen if I'm going to go in on this? So it was worth my time. But that's kind of how it went down. Well, can we just have him stay up there? Maybe. Yeah, that's how awesome it is. history and my history. We met briefly at a Soul of a event a while back, right? Briefly. And uh, he was following me on Facebook and just reached out one day and said, hey, I'm just interested in knowing about what it is. What's this wake up now? And so we started a conversation and hit, we have a mutual friend who's a, a good friend of both of ours. And uh, we thought for sure he would be he would be all over working with us, but he ended up joining after he came in. First of all, he was a preferred customer for 40, 45 days. Something like that. I told you, I'm anti-MLM. It was a good time I was a preferred customer. Yeah, he was actually <laughs> getting in and looking at the products and trying to understand the value of what we offer. And watching before. Marlin on a daily ba hourly basis. Watching what? Watching Marlin. You know, I joined, you invited me to the No Collar Pro Facebook page. Yeah. And I, I can go on that later, but I was watching Marlon about on the hour. I'm like, who's this Marlon kid, man? Just boom, I want to. Yeah, you were. That's right. He was one of the reasons. Oh, remember, I was calling you. I, that's Marlon. Marlon piqued my interest because I was like, because it wasn't just Marlon wasn't just posting though. Like, hey, yo, we're making money about the team. No, Marlon was every person. I mean, consistently inviting somebody, you know, like welcoming them to the team. But not only that, there was something personal about every individual. It made you want to go work with Marlon because he cared. Like I was like, Marlon knows who this person is. You know, you know what you're talking about, Marlon. You invite, you, you welcome somebody in, and you say, 
hey, this is an outstanding woman. She's been through so many journeys in her life. I'll give you one for example, but she'll tell you more later. You invited her in your welcome to the team. You invited her to be a leader already. It's in her head. It's in everybody's head. Oh, she's going to talk to us eventually. She's going to tell us her story. He definitely trains people how to invite. But it was the team. Yeah, I mean, I was, I was curious. So he was a preferred customer for over a month before he ever became an IBO, ever paid his platinum to, to buy the products because he saw value in the products. He saw value in the team. So he created that foundation. I know he's not going to I couldn't uproot him. I mean, he's went to New York with me. He's in Hawaii with me. I mean, the guy's in the business, right? He's, he's part of my team. And he's... He is my fourth line. We are building, now we're going to build out an amazing team together and help him build this team. But he's engaged. He's, he's present and he's focused. And I was going to keep that on BCC too. What's that? I was going to keep that on BCC too. Oh, for picking pictures? Can't get close, can't get close Marlon, we're right? on a positive note here. <laughs> <laughs> we're moving forward. I get scolded right under you. Like, sir, sir, you can't. I mean, I'm done. So I, I'm done. I follow the rules, right? And then when it's totally dark, pitch black, there's this <laughs> light of heaven that shines out of a mass phone. I have an idea of light of heaven. Or something, the flash goes off, and it's right next to me. So I can't look. So, uh, it, it's those cameras within an app, man. I wasn't ready for the flash. <laughs> Good stuff. Buddy. So um, the, the whole point that I wanted to, you to gather out of that was, it's all right. You're, you're not about this. I love it. Be okay to take it away from people. And if you're not active in the Facebook group, um, we had a conversation that was going around, and I mentioned it, I think the other night about the comment about the four quarters versus the hundred pennies. Yep. And and the yep. reality is, is pennies are everywhere. People leave pennies on the ground. You go around and pick up pennies. Pennies are the person that's the low hanging fruit. They'll join anything. They'll, they'll get involved in anything. You don't, you don't need that kind of an individual around you because a hundred pennies in your pocket are heavy. They weigh you down. They take a lot of effort to pack around. They're noisy. Versus having four quarters in your other pocket. Those are your leaders. Those are your pillars, right? Those are people you build around. Those are people that you grow with, you travel with because they, they don't call and ask you customer service questions. They don't call you and say, hey, why is my back office slow? I don't know, I'm not on your back office. What are you talking about? We're growing a business. We're not, I'm not your customer service outlet, right? That's why the company has a customer service. Albeit the whole times have been long recently because the growth rate of the company is staggering. We're at over a thousand IBOs a day right now. That means that overloads a system. But you know what, I would much rather have the burdens that come with a company that is blowing up than a company that's dying on the vine. Right? So be patient with those. I don't work for corporate, but I'm patient with those because that's a good problem to have. Bring it. Give me a long hold time if I if it is if that's the worst thing I got to deal with. Great. Um, yeah. Can I just come to that? If if there is anybody having issues with the technical difficulties. I used it as a close to keep Dre online because it took him two days to sign up. Wednesday night we were trying. I was texting you, kind of frustrated while you were doing your son's game, and we just said that. Like he got, he was real mad. Like, he went from he wanted to be just frustrated with it. I said, dude, that's this is what you're becoming a part of. And he's like, what? And I said, man, we're having trouble because we're having too many people sign up, getting too excited about this opportunity, and recognize the income they can build and the way they can change their life. I said, so you can keep trying and work with me to get your, you know, get your payment process, get your card at it, and be part of this, or you can't. And he was, and I didn't know what was going to happen because I traveled over here. We still didn't have his card at it. And I get here with Rob. I wake up. I'm like, oh, cool. Robbie's in the system. We're good. So he went into his back office to verify, and now he could see that he could see all the products, which <laughs> he finally got through the system. So I think that that experience will actually make him stronger because he's starting to cement why he wants to be involved why he wants to build. We, look, we don't, we're not, we're not doing rocket science. We're not solving cancer. We are not doing anything like that. What we are doing is we are giving people hope and, hope and an opportunity, an opportunity. This isn't a business opportunity, that's not what I'm talking about. We're giving them opportunity to find out who they are and that they have the moxie and the, the drive and the desire to make change. 
If they don't, they will quit. And that's okay. You cannot want it worse for somebody else than they want it for themselves. And you can't spend your time trying to go around resurrecting the dead. You need to get involved with people that want it as bad as you. And that have a no quit, no die, never surrender attitude like you. I know, it's my, my body reacts funny. My heart about something I'm excited about. So I want to talk about fear for a second. Fear, you, first of all, what is fear? Necessary. There's a, a necessary, yes. <laughs> it keeps us safe oftentimes, right? Even though my I, I experienced sincere, genuine fear yesterday. I was excited, but I was scared. It could be a motivator. It was a motivator. I also had a bunch of guys behind me that I was going, I can't not. I mean, can you imagine if I, if I said, I'm not doing it, right? I got to quit. I can't. I'm not going out that door. These guys, I, they would have, I would have never lived it down. I would have never forgiven myself, right? But that thought did cross my mind when I was staring at 11,000 feet of air. Um, it was fleeting, albeit that. But that my heart was racing so much and my heart was beating so fast that it was genuine fear. One second. But you just made a comment. The acronym for fear is what? False evidence appearing real. False evidence appearing real. We create oftentimes fear that's not relevant. Because we're either scared to talk to somebody or we're scared that someone's going to say, what is the worst case scenario when you go up and try to build rapport with somebody? Because once you have rapport, the conversation is easy to segue into. Okay? Because you're really trying to find out what motivates them. Are they... Do they want change in their life? If they don't and they're totally content, don't even bring it up. Or just bring up the fact that you've got a really great product that they can participate in for free as a preferred customer and save money on what they're already buying, right? Okay. I like how you brought up POG to really bring me the note. <laughs> You realize we're all friends. You probably could have just said, hey, Rob, I got a comment. Uh, although, do I, I do love Pog. I drank this by the gallon when I was 17 years old and I lived on Maui. Pog was like the nectar of the gods. <laughs> um, so really quick, false evidence appearing real. We create the, the worst thing that could possibly happen when you go to introduce somebody to starting a business is that they're not interested. Who cares? Who cares? This is a sifting and sorting activity. Because you're only looking for people who want what you have. If they don't, it doesn't change your relationship. You're still friends. So I don't understand the idea, of, I don't want to talk to that. I'm scared to talk to that person. What on God's green earth are you scared about? That they're going to say no? Please. I hit a, uh, I hit a transition point to where I talk to people and like, you know, you, you, you hear about other businesses and things like this, but on and on and on. So a lot of people will say no because they've heard it before. But somewhere, like I said, I believe in products. I hit a transition point to now when I hear a no in my head I laugh and I kind of walk away because I know there's an opportunity that they're missing and they would just listen and had value in it so when they say no or oh, I'm not interested I just kind of laugh and chuckle because they stuck in that old mindset so if they had the new mindset they would at least listen let me build on that great comment if someone says no so this comes out of a conversation I had two days ago. The guy said no, because it was a pyramid, right? Well, wherever that comment came from, the pyramid comment, right? And I said, well, hang on a second. I'm just going to stop you right there. Let's set a time where we can circle back, because I have a clearly not done an effective job in telling you what it is 
that I have to offer you because if you knew, you would not be saying no. And the reason you wouldn't be saying no is because you are smart. And the fact that you're smart, you would not be saying no. So I have done an ineffective job in explaining to you what it is that I want you to understand. So let's regroup. We're going to circle back. And we're going to set another time where I can actually talk to you after I've either gathered my thoughts or done something because I need to approach you differently for you to really understand what it is that I have to offer you because you're smart. And I placated his ego, which believe it or not worked because he knows he's smart. He thinks he's the smartest person on the planet. So the fact that I said, because you're smart, you would not say no if I was doing something effective. So I took...